Hey there folks, this is David on David's Brain. Welcome back to our ongoing Let's Play of Control for the PS4 on PS5. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, contribute by Patreon, link description in the bottom, stay at science, stay safe, wear a mask, get vaccinated. Alright, so last time, after getting my asses kicked by the hiss quite a few times and getting a big old exposition dump from, uh, em uh, from Emily, uh, yeah, we managed to reclaim the dead letters office. And, yeah, let's see, where are we now? O oops. Alright, yeah, we're still, uh, we still need to head on over to, uh, we still need to go and track down the hotline. Alright, let's see, navigate through the communications department. Alright, and there's communications. Communications. We're on the right track. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, and also found this incredibly disturbing video. Hmm. Let's see, the cafeteria's there. If I were a betting boy, I'd say I, I'd probably have to follow the blood. Yep. Thought so. All right, nothing in here. Welcome to the comms department. Oh boy. Oh, that looks inviting. Yep, definitely not going over there for now. Alright, let's see. Book Club Samson. Let's see here. Let's see, Book Club Samson. Let's see, uh, Book Club Notes for Penny by L. Samson. So, I don't usually read a lot of sci-fi, but as far as space operas go, this was alright. The title, unless you could refer to a bunch of things in the book, uh, in the book, I guess. But I thought it was a little vague and stupid. The way the characters kept throwing it around almost like a catchphrase got real annoying real fast. The best part of the story was the space battles. I signed with the fixers, obviously, because they had the coolest tech and their bows made the most sense to me. Honestly, if I had to choose between some hoity-toity flowers and gun space hippies or a badass bunch of warriors who go around devouring planets like cheap sushi on a Sunday, I know who I'm picking. That's scene where they evade city planning and convert the entire population into those brain worms, uh, using the brain worms, and that space dog fight between those two ace pilots? Sign me the fuck up. Yeah, what kind of ruined the whole thing for me was when my favorite character got killed not even halfway through the story by getting a battery cylinder launched into a space by a gravitational anomaly. This stuff didn't feel necessary at all. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Sounds like a. Hmm. Little... Uh, sounds kind of like a little bit of hodgepodge of like space battleship Yamato, Star Trek, and just like a whole bunch of stuff. Hmm. Let's see. Ammo refund chance on hit. Hmm.
Uh, hopefully that guy's just knocked out. An object of power. Looks like the hiss have latched onto it. We need to cleanse it. Oh boy. All right, that's a bad. Uh, that's a bad op. Very bad op. Oh, of course, make it easy, why don't ya? At least now it's finally teaching me how to crouch. That could have come in handy a lot earlier. All right, let's see. Where is it? All right, the floppy disk. All right, calm down, little guy. here. It's like the channel's been changed. The board's in charge here. They're pyramids in the bureau seal. Are they really the ones pulling the strings? I'm not their director. I'm no one's director. Yeah, no, it's more like a board of executives. You're, you may be the CEO, but the answer to these clowns. All right, anyways, time for telekinesis. Well, hey, plus side, uh, uh, plus side, you're now Magneto, master of magnet. The cute thing of a jig. Ah, so that's where the energy thing is talking about here. Looks like I got a limit on my t uh, ability gift burden. Yeah, I wonder if Emily knows anything about the about the board. Paranatural powerhouse. There you are. You were gone. Cut off. Yep, I'm still here though. I got it. 
just like you wanted, right? This will help me fight the hiss. Mm hmm. All right, anyways, collectibles, case files, and yep, another object of power the floppy disk. Acquisition date, uh, let me see, March uh, 31st, uh, no, wait, no, wait, March 11th, 1974. Let's see, containment location redacted. Floppy disk, uh, object of power, P E K E. Containment procedure must be contained in a cell with no other loose material. Description slash uh, parachuality. Uh, the object is an 8-inch diskette containing Soviet-era nuclear launch codes. When bound, the object allows parachutions, uh, a para, uh, let's see, uh, para-utilitarians, uh, to telekinetically lift material and throw it for a short distance. See Dr. Darling presentation 11.15 for more information. The object is currently bound to, for research purposes, Background. Stolen from a Soviet military base located in by agents and with the CIA, the disk uh, the disk contained launch codes to uh, uh, the disk contained launch codes to nuclear missiles, believed to be reserved for use against the United States. After being returned to America, the disk began throwing con uh, uh, the disk began throwing computational hardware at members of the Dakota team. An informant in the CIA tipped off the bureau, and it was requisitioned by agents of the next day. Alright, so a Soviet-era floppy disk containing nuclear launch codes that gained the ability to, uh, uh, uh to, uh, 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 to, yeah, telekinetically toss objects at will. Hmm. Chicken. You know, if I remember right, I think there's a trophy involved that uh, involves catching a grenade and tossing it back with telekinesis. Gotta keep an eye out for that. Alright, let's see. New enemy, a hiss demolition expert. Let's see. Confidential. Let's see. The bureau only allowed the bureau only allowed certain highly trained individuals to handle volatile materials and weaponry. Our demolition experts are instructed the use of explosives and dimensions with distinct physical laws, making them important assets for engineering work as well as combat situations. Hiss demolition experts are the only observed hiss variations to wield the specially built rocket propelled grenade that's designed to identify and track. Uh, uh, paranormal entities once fired, making them a threat to whose termination should be prioritized in combat scenarios. I find it remarkable that the Hiss restrict usage of this weapon to the Bureau personnel who train specifically for its use. What does this tell us about its behavior? Can it not pass along new information to corrupted entities? Still too many unknowns. I'll refer to file whatever for the full report. And the Hiss Ranger. Let's see, the Rangers are the Bureau's well-trained and well-armed exp expeditionary forces. Uh, uh. 
uh, expeditionary forces, though his corrupted counterparts are equally formidable. Prior to corruption, rangers were trained to use a variety of weapons in order to uh, face any threat found used uh, during AWE response or threshold exploration, including sub uh, submachine guns, assault rifles, and automatic shotguns. His rangers utilized these weapons as well as the advanced tactics brought, uh, taught by Bureau instructors. Some were additionally outfitted with Bureau-made body armor. His rangers have no observed paranatural abilities beyond some being protected by a uh, shielding of dense Hiss residents capable of stopping bullets. Considering the advanced training the Hiss rangers are capable of applying to their situation, is it feasible to consider the human mind still retain, remains intact to some degree? Or is the Hiss able to tap into this combat training and utilize it? Further observations required. Okay. All right, next up the mail room. The hotline should be around here somewhere. Emily said that the hotline can be reached through the mail room. Let's just hope that uh, let's just hope that the house is playing nice this time. Let's see, nothing else in here. All right, let's see what this is. Correspondence. Tomasi Willow AWE Outcome. Let's see. Reinformation Campaign Summary of Willow AWE. Let's see. National news sites have begun publishing the story of the polar bear attack in the Alaska town. You know, I don't... Uh, you... Uh, you all... All right, let's see. National news sites have begun publishing the story of the polar bear attack on the Alaska town. You all know I don't like the post, but claiming that the family was killed by migrating polar bears desperate for food because their ecosystems being ruined by global warming was a stroke of genius. Using curing ecological concerns makes the public much less likely to... Uh. So, another AWE behind us, and the public is none the wiser. Well done, everyone. It was a strong campaign and perfectly executed. This doesn't mean we can stop monitoring and for any off-message options, but it's looking like we're in the clear. Tomasi, out! All right, so yeah, Tomasi. Uh, so this Tomasi guy basically runs the. Uh, 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 
uh, uh, basically runs SBC misinformation, keeping the public out of the uh, out of the loop about uh, AWEs and objects of power popping up. All right, bingo. All right, there's the mail room. Let's see, dead letters, pneumatics. Oh, hello. All right, got clearance level one. Sweet. And yeah, maybe we'll get some extra goodies by going back inside those uh, inside those rooms. You're listening to America Overnight, mystifying the airwaves for more than 29 years. Thank you for staying up with us. Ghosts. We've had many callers over the years tell us of hauntings, voices, and other phantasmagorical phenomena. Today, friend of the show, Dr. Quincy Reagan, tells his story. Quincy, thanks. This is something I experienced recently while staying at the Chili Pines Motel in Macon for last year's Suspicion Con. I was in room 47. The night manager, an avid listener of the program, insisted I take this particular room. Now, the manager explained that years back, the body of a man was discovered under the bed. Inside that wooden border that motel beds tend to have. And the body had been there a week, he said. Guests had stayed there, sleeping with the corpse a foot below him. They only found the body when housekeepers complained about the smell. Hauntings have been reported in room 47 ever since. I happily took the room. I fell asleep pretty quick, checking under the bed first, of course. No ghosts visited me. No chilly spots or flickering lights. But when I woke up, I found myself under the bed. It was dark and stiflingly hot. Luckily, I was able to push the mattress off and crawl out before I suffocated. The night manager was kind enough to find me another room. <sighs> there you have it, listeners. What we call ghosts take many forms. Quincy was brave enough to tell his story, and I encourage you to keep calling and writing whenever you encounter something strange, something you can't explain. Maybe you're seeing colors that we have no name for. Maybe your toaster is possessed. Remember, dear listeners, when no one else believes you, we do. America Overnight, we'll be right back. Yeah, pretty clever. Good way to go and flush out any potential spots for AWEs and, and objects of power and you know, altered spot and let's see, altered objects and stuff. Sure, you'll probably get a couple of the occasional Looney Tunes or a couple of crank callers, but hey, no leads a bad one. Even if it turns out bad, it just means you're just uh, you're just riding it out. And you're just eliminating a suspect.
Yeah, setting up a paranormal radio station. Clever. Or at least you don't have to fight through a whole bunch of hits in order to get to, uh, get to that. This must open the door. Let's see, America overnight. Yeah, perfect way for the bureau to go and keep track uh, keep track of any uh, any potential signs for people to go and call it in. Before we head in there, should we go and see if we can uh, crack open some goodies in the level 1 clearance office? Yeah, you know what, we should. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, if they're giving us a save point, a warp point right in front of, the, uh, right in front of where, the, uh, where the hotline is, Odds are good where I have to go and deal with the boss. Trust me, I I've seen this trope before. I know what I know what to expect here. Hotline should be in the communications department. Thanks, Emily. I'm sure I'll have more questions soon. Just let me know. Okay, let's see let's see what we got here. Parachuli. Uh, peri uh, peri utility. Compiled by Emily Pope by order of Dr. Darling. Let's see. Let's see. Objects of power are unique in their capacity to grant certain individuals paranatural abilities. We call these individuals parautilitarians. Uh, the potency of these abilities depends on the para-utilitarian. Using, uh, uh, using the floppy disk object of power as an example, some para-utilitarians can achieve a throat distance of... while others are only capable of as little as... Mm, see Dr. Darling presentation, yeah. Uh, what exactly determines an individual's paranatural competence is unknown, but it's largely believed that some uh, something exists within the body and that, like all muscles, it can be exercised. To continue my analysis, I've officially, re I've officially requested access to the Northmore records. And considering he's one of the most accomplished para-utilitarians the Bureau has ever seen, Dr. Darling is still considering this request. Refer to file 8-54-1982 for the full report. So, yeah, so, uh, some of the objects of power grant people, like, uh, extra, uh, so it grants people, so it grants people superpowers. Uh, how effective they are depends on them. So, what, like, Metachlorians or something like that?
Yep, no, it's just making sure I didn't miss anything. I mean, hey, I got a level one clearance, so I might as well extra. I might as well use it. Alright, let's see what we got here. Strange collection. Alright. Aged death notification. Dear, oh, uh, let's see. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Potts, I regret to inform you that your son, Graham Potts, was killed in active duty this past week. While the details surrounding his death are classified, I'm honored to tell you that he died in service of his country. He can be proud of his courage in the face of danger and his commitment to protecting our nation against their enemies. He'll be remembered by his comrades and colleagues. I sincerely regret the pain this message will bring you. Take some solace in knowing that his sacrifice helped protect the country he loves so much. His effects will be returned to you of all speed. Yours, uh, sincerely yours, Howard J. Murray, Deputy Chief of Communications, Federal Bureau of Control. And yeah, like, uh, let's see. Words to use, in service of his or her country, regret, proud, pride, will be remembered. Words, uh, phrases be avoided. Alaska, scissors, blood, bleed, loss, apologies, and sorry. Hmm. And, um, and his body's gone. Yeah, Trench's body's gone. That's... What, the house just decided to go and chuck his corpse into the garbage disposal or something like that? Ooh, clearance level four, eh? Now that's curious. All right, might as well retrace my steps through the mail room. Hmm. All right, it's just a treasure chest for goodies. Okay.
All right, come on, give me the projectile. Yeah, well, that could have been a lot better than I expected. Yeah, it could have been a lot worse. Alright, security clearance level two. Only have level one. Mm. Yeah, definitely not watching that again. I wonder if there's a memo around here that says anything about what exactly those threshold kids are. Let's see, mnemonics. Let's see, any security doors around here? Let's see. Case files. Let's see. Havana supplement. Let's see. Event date. Uh, let's see. September 23rd, 2017. Havana, Cuba. Let's see. Details. Bureau of medical staff personally evacuated the injured embassy personnel when they arrived back in the, uh, back in the country. While the victims reported uh, cognitive issues, dizziness, and fatigue, further testing by Bureau of Medics found intense cell damage similar to that of radiation exposure. Agents of research staff remained to take soil samples from the surrounding area, but found no traces of an, of an altered, wor uh, altered world event beyond the health issues of the staff. The communications departments disseminated the story of foreign powers using, uh, uh, let's see, um, a biochemical warfare on the embassy staff, resulting in various health issues that required the embassy be to, uh, to be evacuated. The story successfully took hold, gaining brief international attention. Let's see, shattered projectile choke.
Or anything else that I may have missed? All right, let's keep going. Let me see, anything else here? Oh, hello, what's this? All right, let's see, correspondence. Marshall Lockdown Distinctions. Let's see. Uh, from H. Marshall to uh, Tomasi uh, to Alberto Tomasi. Proper distinction of lockdown types. Uh, pay attention, Alberto. This is the last time I'm explaining this. Internal lockdowns are manually triggered events that lock one or all of the sectors by restricting use of the sector elevator, effectively locking staff in their sector until the emergency is handled. They can only be lifted via the directorial override and maintenance once the director is satisfied that the situation is under control. External lockdowns are a bigger deal. Nothing in or out of the whole building. It's only triggered by a code red containment breach based on some complicated system that security and research slapped together. It can only be lifted once A, the threat has been neutralized, and B, a high clearance individual gives the system is all clear. Now, this process is not the same as the directorial override, so stop saying so in documentation. I know it's confusing as hell, I told Darling a hundred times to change it, but they're adamant it stays the way it is. Honestly, I don't think they even know how to change it at this point. Let's just make sure our staff understands how this mess, uh, mess all works, okay? Marshall. Jeez, if you guys don't even know how this all works, what the hell makes you think that uh, everyone else would? Mm. Oh, the janitor. <laughs> okay, so what the hell is all that then? Oh boy. Ranger First Class Coleman, eh? All right, so what? Oh, what? What was that? All right, let's see here. Personal mod. 
energy recovery speed, okay. All right, let's see, data breach. Let's see, secure, uh, confirmed data breach. Let's see, last month, our on-site server experienced an intrusion by unauthorized users. After a thorough investigation, it was confirmed that the users only accessed a video file which contained portions of various Dr. Darley presentations. Investigators were able to track the users through their IP addresses. The following are the confirmed identities of these users. Patrick Zuzinchins, Robins Nyogra, Artyo Kurumaki, Christopher Mills Bowling, and Jaco Seren. These individuals are in breach of Bureau Code 91 and have been placed under surveillance by an external investigation team. Further actions pending. So, what are these? Uh, a bunch of hackers from, like, what, Scandinavia or something like that? Or, I don't know, Sweden? I don't know. Oh, did I check in here yet? Ah, yeah, I did. Okay. All right. Well, uh, obviously, there's something very nasty hiding inside the uh, inside the community inside the mail room there. So. Yeah, probably got to save a call today just so we can go at it fresh. All right, let's see. All right, all right. So call it a day, and next time we are going to confront whatever the hell is inside the bail room. So till next time, folks. This is David on David's brain. Stay inside, stay safe, wear a mask, get vaccinated. Bye bye.